All right, uh, I thought I'd just add a little bit to this video. I've taken the cover plates off so I can show you what it looks like. They're attached by just these two screws with the standard little square harmonica nut. These are the two cover plates right here. They're actually pretty stiff, you know, not flimsy or anything like that. Uh, and here you can see how it's laid out. There's blow and draw reeds on both sides. So I've marked them with a little uh, bit of Sharpie right there so I can tell which side is supposed to be out. And I've marked the top cover plate with an arrow. The arrow actually points to the spring where the slide interacts. Um, you can also see that you can take the cover plates off really easily without having to disassemble the mouthpiece and slide assembly. The uh, offending reed, the one that was sticking, was the three blow natural so I'm gonna pull it out and blow on it and that would be the reed I got my finger on right now so I'm gonna try and grab my reed gapping tool out of my toolkit here uh, where are you there you are Okay, and so basically you got to be really careful. There's a lot more reeds on this thing. I'm basically going to gap it the way I would gap a diatonic harp with the cover plates actually still on. I actually don't disassemble my harps a lot of times when I'm doing my gapping with this little brass tool I got. I can reach in and adjust them either way. So let me check that out. Not sticking at all. And it's actually not airy. I actually should adjust the two blow to it slightly sticky. Maybe you can see what I'm doing when I'm doing this. All right. Let's try that out. Responds well. Uh, the other problem I was having was the uh, the 10 draw, which is this reed right here, was actually a little airy. So I'm actually going to take my tool and gap that down just a little bit. The reeds aren't horribly stiff. I mean, they're not super um, uh, strong reeds, but they're not weak. They're not like blues band reeds. Still a little airy. I'm going to actually that's wrong. <laughs> so on the bottom is the ten draw natural read. I was adjusting the ten draw slide in read. So let me try that now. Needs to be gapped even tighter. So I'm gently just pushing down on it. You can see. Let me try it out. Let me try them all. Everything sounds good on the naturals. Now with the slide in. It's all adjusted properly. So really it was just those two, maybe three reeds that needed adjustment. You can see actually how many screws are attaching the reed plates. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a reasonable amount. Plus the cover plate screw. So that's actually 10 screws, 10 points of pressure on the whole thing. Um, the front assembly, which I'm not going to remove for you at the moment because it's slightly more touchy, are these two screws right here. And then the slide assembly itself. Uh, one of the things you have to do is sort of sort of take these screws down till they're fairly tight and the slide is really a little stiff against them. The motion is stiff. You can feel it rubbing. And then just sort of back off ever so slightly on those till the slide just starts moving freely. And that ensures that your, your slide assembly is as airtight as possible. You're not going to be losing air from this hole into the next hole because the slide uh, will be resting 
you know, fairly tightly against the back uh, of, or the sort of front of the comb and the back of the mouthpiece, but without being so aggressive that the friction keeps it from moving. And you'll notice that after playing for a little while and putting it down that the slide will be initially, it doesn't feel like it's going to move. Well, that's because your saliva will have solidified on the inside. So you can just sort of give it a, if it doesn't move with a little bit of a, like that, I guess what you do is put it in water and sort of move it around, just just the bottom part in water and move it around, pushing that till it loosens. For me, it's all come loose with a quick, like that. One thing I might do is sort of flat sand the, the slider itself, just the face of it, with no pressure, like I would do a, a reed plate, just on really fine sandpaper, just sort of shaking it back and forth so it's polished a little bit. That might make it, I can get the pressure down a little bit, but it's actually pretty good. I don't find it breathy at all. There you go. Alright, so uh, you saw the very minor bit of modification I did, just a little bit of gapping, and uh, you probably heard the video before where I was trying to play and how stiff it was. It was causing me a little bit of difficulty, that and the fact that I'm still a novice at this style of harp. So let's play it again now with just that little bit of gapping and see how it sounds. For me, for some reason, just those little modifications made the thing a lot better because I wasn't hitting those little bit of resistance here and there that was causing my tongue to stumble about. So anyway, Honer Educator 10. I, I highly recommend it. It's $35. Uh, it's amazing. If you're a blues diatonic harp player and you're looking at a chromatic to get, uh, this is the one I should say you should go for. It's actually cheaper than most of your the blues harps that you've been buying. And uh, it'll just... It's opened my mind anyway to a whole different way of playing and different styles and I, I definitely uh, I think that was a really good $35 spent. Uh, anyway, catch you on the flip side. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it.